Hey, that's smooth. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you'll know I'm working through the design of a desktop robot arm. I'm finding these thin wall bearings really useful. The large inner diameter allows me to pop 3D printed parts inside instead of having to use metal shafts. The larger size is like I'm using here in this cycloidal drive. Also spread out any axial load over a larger area, meaning they make up for the lack of stiffness in the 3D printed parts surrounding them. I realise that last bit might not quite make sense, so here's a quick example. I'll take a small bearing with a 13mm outside diameter. If we put a rod into it and try and move the rod side to side, we have to apply a whole lot of force to the sides of the bearing to stop the movement. However, if we take this bearing with a 32mm outside diameter and rig up some random stuff to hold the same rod, you can see that it takes a lot less force to stop the rod moving. As we increase the size further, the effect increases further still. This is great for the sizes I've shown here, you can pick up these 32mm bearings for about a pound each, but as the size increases the cost goes up hugely. I want to use some 4 and 5 inch bearings in my robot arms base and these are about 20 or 30 pound each. So let's see if we can 3D print these instead. I don't trust my 3D printer to print perfect spheres for the ball bearings, so I've picked up some steel BBs. These are dirt cheap, about 5 pound for 1500. Jumping straight into Fusion 360, I've knocked up this quick prototype. It's nice and small, so it should print quickly. We have an inner shell and an outer shell, and there's a small hole in the top to insert the bearings through. With the parts fresh off the printer, we can fill it with BBs. As you can see, there seems to be very little play, but there's also quite a lot of friction. I'm not saying this won't work, but I'm sure we can do better. Most bearings don't pack the inner race full of BBs like we've done here. Instead they use a smaller number of ball bearings spaced out by a cage. This time I can't just pop the BBs in through a hole in the top because of the cage, so I've split the outer piece into two. I'll glue these together before testing. This version seems to run with a lot less friction and still only has a very small amount of play, but I'm interested to see if reducing the number of balls means it will wear out more quickly. To test these two bearings, I want to spin them at a constant velocity while applying a load. To do this I've printed a piece which will push into the centre of the bearing and can have a small rod inserted to keep the centre from rotating. I can then apply a fairly constant pressure to this using a sprung centre. This has a spring inside which applies a force of about 3.3 kilograms. The outside of the bearing is then held in a chuck on my lathe and the sprung centre advanced using the tailstock. Oh by the way, this is my Myford Super 7 lathe, ain't she pretty? I'll leave this running for about half an hour, but through the magic of editing you won't have to sit through the whole thing. Next, I'll repeat the same thing with the cage bearing. I'm spinning these at 200 RPM, so half an hour should equate to hours and hours of use on a robot. Well, the two bearings don't seem to be any the worse for wear after their ordeal. They might be a little bit dirtier, but they don't seem to be any looser or have any more play. Let's try a bigger bearing, one with a 100mm in a diameter. Well, filling that cage was an absolute ball ache, but it seems to work quite well. Let's glue it together and take a better look. That seems to run nice and smoothly, and it has minimal play. I'm sure that if I put some silicon grease around the balls, then it would run even more nicely. It's not quite as good as the all-metal bearings. It's a bit more noisy and there's more friction, but at less than a pound in cost, it'll be fine for prototyping my robot arm. I'll upload the CAD for both of these types of bearings to my GitHub page and put the link in the description below. The design is fully parametric, so you can easily make any size bearing you like from it. Please subscribe to see progress on the arm design, give me a like if you've enjoyed this, and drop me a note in the comments if you have any ideas on other uses for this or changes I could make to it. See you later!